from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. Welcome to the Morielli and Hitch podcast on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Today is going to be a special day because Rob is going to drive the bus a little bit today. It's your job today. You're going to drive the bus, bud. Well, you're staying at what? Airbnb somewhere? I'm an Airbnb where, in where Montreal. About, oh, Montreal. We just talked about Montreal and how we liked Montreal. Yes. Where we are you by like yourself? Montreal. I'm with a bunch of my staff because by the time this airs tomorrow, which will be Wednesday, we will have announced our Montreal team. So we're here to, to announce the team tomorrow. So Wednesday, early afternoon. That's why I had to push this around. I was flying this morning. But we started this show with you trying to figure out where the camera is on your computer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen. Show, show me where you thought it was originally, okay. where you were staring the first this time. This is going to sound a little crazy, but this is where the camera is on my monitor. This yeah. is where the camera is on my laptop. Yeah. I have a big monitor, like 42-inch monitor, and that the camera is right there, but the red light isn't on, so that must mean it's not on me. But this one would be on me. So right back at you. <laughs> it took you that long. It's been five minutes and it took you that long to figure it out. Okay. Over Anyways, to you. No. Go, Listen, go ahead. Did you, uh, did you watch the games this weekend? Any of them? Hamilton especially? And what did you think? Did. I didn't go to the game, but I watched it. I thought that again, I, I think there's still room in the tank. You know what I mean? Like I don't think they're playing their best ball. Now, having said that, the victory is all that matters. And as long as you rev up, like, you know, post Labor Day in a normal season, as long as you're revving up for the playoffs, it doesn't matter. So right now you look at the standings in the East, right? You got two teams at six and six in Montreal and Toronto. Six and you got the four, Cats. let me correct you. Six, six and four, four, whatever. You know, I'm driving right? the six bus. Six wins. I'm driving, driving the bus. bus. Good. I yeah. need to be corrected. <laughs> and then the Cats are at what? Five and five, right? Is that yes. correct? Yes. One game out. This is nice. This is good. So I did watch the Ottawa and Montreal game too. No, the Toronto Montreal game too. So that was a big win by Montreal. I think that helped the Cats overall because now they're only yeah. a point, you know, a game out of yeah. both positions. Exactly. How about the West? <sighs> oh, 10 and God. one, Winnipeg. 10 and one. Like they're garbage out there. You got BC four and six. Oh, which last, I mean, they're not last. Yeah, they are last place, isn't there? No, they're not last no, place. Edmonton. Edmonton. Two and seven, but they got two games in hand. Uh, Calgary five and six, Saskatchewan six and four, and then ten and one. They've already clinched. It's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nuts. I don't think there's going to be a crossover. Looking at uh, if Hamilton keeps winning yeah. and Montreal keeps winning, there's not going to be a crossover, which is going to be nice. Finally, get a nice Eastern uh, semifinal playing against the East, which I think would be. I agree. Uh, so uh, leading into the Ottawa loss, something I don't know if you saw the news yesterday. Uh, but our good friend, uh, Marcel Desjardins, got fired I, as a GM. I saw that. Oh, I was so happy. Uh, listen to me. <laughs> to this day, Rob, yeah? uh, you and I still don't know what exactly happened when we were given our walking papers. You remember that day? Oh, I still I, don't well, know who pulled the trigger. Uh, who pulled know, the trigger? Well, Charlie Taft wasn't even in the room when we were cut. He had no idea. No. He had no so, idea. And, um, you know, Marcel was the new GM, just came in from Montreal, I think. And uh, he was he was a big part of it, like 99 percent of it. He didn't like us for some reason. Um, but I'll tell you, and a little story going back, because I think I remember telling you guys when I went to Edmonton and I ran out and I was the last guy out and all the all the uh, Eskimos were down on the goal line, blah, blah, blah. But before that, we were warming up. And uh, I didn't say a word to Desjardins. He was on the field walking around, talking to people. And I knew from the night before, I was told by someone in the Hamilton organization that, um, and they, they let me know this and probably shouldn't have, but I never said a word. I was really nice about it. Told me that Marcel was being fired from Hamilton. And I knew this when I saw him on the field. I don't think I ever told oh. anybody this. I'm glad I'm saying it over this now. <laughs> and uh, because this is what, 14 years later. So, I saw him on the field and he goes, Hey, Hitch, how are you? And I was like, Oh, pretty good. How you doing? And he goes, Oh, we are pretty good. Got a decent season going. I said, yeah. 
Um, and then I looked at him. I said, so what are you going to do for next year? And he says, he looked at me like this. What? I said, oh, I'm just asking what you're doing for next year. Have a nice one. See you later. And I walked right away. I was very professional about it, but never said a word next day. Fire. You didn't even tell me that. No, you I kept that in. Me. I don't know why I'm bringing it up now, but you know what? Oh, well, you probably forgot. Yeah, concussions. But a guy, a guy, like he, I don't just think he didn't respect us. I don't know. And I don't like, I never not like somebody. I, I, I couldn't say, I, I would never wish any ill will on anybody. But what the way he did it, was just like he had a cold face, bad. you know, 12, 13, we're going in our 13th year. And, and for someone to do that, how cold it was, uh, I thought it was very, I mean, a business decision is a business decision. We get it. Like we're not, we're not stupid, but to go out like that and just say, basically, I thought there was, I was, I was on camera when he said, you know, we're oh, gonna, I, we, I couldn't believe it. I said, I, yeah. I didn't take it serious. No, I didn't take it serious until they told me, that they had just spoken to you because they spoke to you before they spoke to me. Yeah. And when they told me we just spoke to him, I, I, I was it. I couldn't, yeah. couldn't, I couldn't even handle it. I, well, I, I looked for the I camera. I looked for the camera. I said, this is oh, a joke, yeah. right? Bullshit. I go, you're going to show this on the screen, <laughs> that little screen, the light bright board out the Ivorywind stadium. And, and they're like, uh, no, no. And I said, so you're, you're cutting me today. And they said, Oh, but I would let you go. So anyways, I don't want to harp on it, but anyways, he got fired. Looks good on him. Him and K is a bitch. Karma's a bitch. What are you going to do? 15 years later. Exactly. Did you hear, uh, did you hear the, uh, great cup tickets went on sale today? Really? That's nice. Where did you go? Oh, I'm back. I'm back now. Uh, yeah. Uh, I heard went on sale today to the general public, 5,000, tickets only that's it reason really? being the league didn't or, or the uh province didn't let uh tim hortons field i guess get the extra 12 or 15 thousand they're supposed to get so only twenty four thousand at the game and that's why i think they've got it for 2023 so they can yeah, wrap yeah, it up today sure. so I, I think that's what it is but only five thousand to the general public they're probably sold out yeah, they went from 99 bucks to you know that Coors Light, the end zone where the scoreboard yeah. is. It's like a common area. It's like I think they're 100 buck tickets, which are probably gone, and then up to 500 bucks for the gold section, platinum, and all that. So, but hey, listen, yeah. it'll be it'll be a great show. It, and then the best thing is, like we said before, you get 2023 all over again. That's huge because now you had time to ramp up. Now we know. We've seen this, the, the COVID framework from the government by March of next year. They want it to be all over and everything. And this is all great. I hope it works out to perfection. But, you know, when we start looking down the road at 22 and 23, we've got to get back to normal, man. This is crazy. Yeah, I, it's there's some relatively normalcy going on right now. But yeah, still, it's getting better and better. The restaurants are still taking beatings, right? Like they're only allowed capacity. They're not full yet, which I don't agree I mean, I guess they're indoors, whatever. I don't want to get into that stuff, but I'm drinking a little bit of wine actually. Cause it's what four nice. times so a little bit of vino. Seriously. Good for you late in the day. Ooh. That's very nice. Um, yeah. So the weekend I played uh, in our hockey tournament, <laughs> golf hockey tournament. You remember that? Did, did the cooler that? come out? The Ryan ginger? No, did the not pump? have it. I was a disappointed oh. Ted, uh, Ted didn't bring it out and there was no dragging of any raccoons. So, uh, oh. but it was still, it was still good. I think there was about 15 or so bottles of Jaeger and fireball left on the course, but nice. uh, it was good. It was a, it wasn't a bad day. Uh, meaning weather wise, it was cool in the morning. We teed off at nine. I think it was eight, 10 degrees, but it got nice. It was a scramble. So we didn't give a shit. And then Sunday we had our Hitchcock tournament which was the family tournament and uh, the actual weather was, was pretty good. Oh. And we, we had fun. We had the walk though, Mitzi. We had the oh. walk. no carts That's allowed. Hard, it eh? was too wet. And my wife, Michelle was like, is this over after six holes? She played too? Yeah. Ava, everyone. All, all oh, my you family. had everybody. 20 of the uh, nephews, um, like extended family, sister-in-law, all that. Yeah. Wow. So you know what I did this weekend? What'd you do? For the last... Oh, man, it's got to be almost 50 years. I swear to God, my dad and his buddies play in this annual football game called the BFL, the Brightside Football League. At right? Westdale. At Westdale. So we, we didn't play at Westdale. The last couple of years we've been playing at Winston Churchill because they're redoing Westdale Park for the 400th time. So we, so, and these guys, now, my dad's now 76. Most of his buddies are in that vintage, you know, 75 to 80. Order fields. There's a 
oh, the, the, the field, the grass on the field is this high. It doesn't matter. My dad runs, at, you know, a 12, 9, 10 meter dash at this point. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, his buddies are, there's a couple of beers, a guy named John Brodnicki. His nickname is Snitz. Went to Central, still wears his Central Letterman's jacket. It's literally 60 years old. You know, it's, you know when it's so old that it cracks and it's like falling apart? Yeah. He still has it. He had on gardening gloves. I said, Ooh. where'd you get those gloves? He goes, oh, no, no, these are built for speed. These are built for speed. They're nice. Keep my hands tender. Oh, you, you throw these guys like a the button hook. It takes them 16 years to run a four-yard four, four yard button hook. And then after that, it's game on. No one knows what happens at that point, but it's, it is so much fun. These guys, I, I look over, I come to the sideline to John Brodnicki. He goes, we brought a special guest this year. He, I look at the sidelines and he's got this table set up with a tablecloth and a bust of the Pope for no reason, just because he wanted you know somebody to watch us. He was a public school guy. He's a central guy. All my dad went to cathedral. All, you know, my uncle went to cathedral. All his buddies went to cathedral. So it's the North versus the South. And in that part of town, when they grew up, it was called Brightside. My yeah. dad was on the north, I think. Everyone else was on the south. So anyways, that's what I did. It was a lot of fun. It, it makes me realize in the next 20 years how downhill I'm going to go very quickly yeah. from an athletic point of view. Well, you got to hand it to them. They're, they're out there still playing and oh, having fun. Awesome. Like, my gosh, that would, that would be awesome to see. I remember I played in that with uh, – I was the special <laughs> guest probably 20 years ago with uh yep. burn uh wally filoni had that side he was That's playing right. in that and he brought me out remember you were you and your brother uh disaster we Greg was on the one at yep. westdale we played in that it was a bit of a mud bowl but uh that was a lot of fun you get all get got together i think you guys go back somewhere or you had you had something there I don't we know used to yeah. this year we didn't because yeah. and then we you know we at the end of the game we we hand out the the trophy it's basically a unico yeah. can of oil that's been oh. empty from 50 years ago it's That's a chicken awesome. bone and stuck to it and uh you know how you get the players in the game how long oh my god it's gotta be 50 years it's gotta be 50 years wow. since you were born wow i know crazy eh? but it's that's good bad. it was fun week it was good was your dad did he have a anyone defibrillators or you're good oh my god it was close but <laughs> close a few times close oh a few gosh. times oh my god hey if you uh when you you and I didn't go to the same uh, evaluation camp, CFL evaluation camp, no, right? You were I went in '94. Yeah, you went in '95. Yeah. Did you go to Winnipeg? Where was your camp? Winnipeg. How garbage was that camp? Oh, from what I remember, garbage. Like the we got McDonald's the, the just week. before yeah. testing. Subway. We got Subway. Right before testing, right before the 40. Eat these subs. When we had to do the test, it was inside a golf dome. It's the middle of March or something. It's freezing cold in Winnipeg. And to do the vertical jump, the way we did the vertical jump was, it was a steel girder holding up like the platform. We had to jump against the steel girder yeah, yeah. to try and test your vertical. You had to hit the wall. We hit the wall. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, Honest gosh. to God. Now but, they got but, it so easy. Yeah, but you have to you have to admit there was ways to cheat that. Do you remember going oh, to the yeah. wall? I can't I don't know if you, you guys can see it. So you go up to the wall like this, and you, you're like stretching as high as you can. Meanwhile, you can do another five inches, yeah. but you put your arm like and you do that. And we keep did the that. shoulder in the socket. Keep the that's, shoulder in the socket. That's why we 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 jumped 32 inches and we should have been five less than that. <laughs> hey buddy, the more you can do. The more you, the, somebody said the, that to me today. That one of my staffs like, oh, you, you do all these little things and you know, driving the car, you're doing this. And I said, when you play in the CFL, man, you got to do it all. Everything. The more yeah. you can do. That's how you stick around. The bench press. I remember the guys were, um, the guys had the arched back and they were bouncing it off their chest. They, and the coaches, I think Deeker or someone was there. Don, Coach well, Don Miles Southern. Miles was there in my year, my year oh, I think. Yelling too. You can't bounce it. And just yelling. I think I got 26 reps. I was 26 nice. reps. Yeah, I got a lot of reps. I had a lot of creatine in me back then. Oh, that's what sort it of was. Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> that's good. A lot of water retention in the face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, whatever but, works. Buddy. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Hey, speaking about the speaking about your little uh, your dad's football and the BLF, right? Was it BLF? BFL, it? BFL, BFL, BFL. Um, do you remember going 
and we used to play ton. We used to do so much community work with uh, like our hockey team. Ty Cats had a hockey team. And uh, we used to go also to all the schools and play basketball games against all the high schools in the city. That Talk was huge. Cats. You remember how fun that was for not only, awesome. I don't think they, I don't think they, I don't even know if they're doing that. Can they even do it with their contracts anymore? Like go and maybe they get hurt. But we used to play at least once a week, a different school, a different high school, and the gym would be packed and oh, yeah. we'd raise some money for the school. I think it cost the kids 50 cents or something to get in. But it was battle, especially against Cathedral and some of the big the big schools. We uh, we had some good we had some good we weren't that good, but we we had some good basketball. Good enough on. to beat the sixteen seventeen year old kids. We were good enough to do that. Well, yeah, and muscle them out. But I think the best one was the hockey team. Like Ty oh Cats, we God. we put together we put together a, a pretty decent hockey team with some coaches and Dennis McPhee Deaker. Uh, he was a pretty 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 good hockey player. But we played the cops and the firefighters. Yep. for a charity event and i'm talking there's two thousand people in the, yep. in the arena and it got a little bit chippy someone one of the cops or somebody chipped one of the guys on the team deeker went by the bench and i don't know if you remember this he got his stick and he pointed to every oh, one of them and he called every one of them out he was a jail guard right big dude he called every cop and every firefighter out onto the ice he wanted to beat oh, yeah. the shit out of them 2000 people in the stands kids holding up signs eh. and he's got this thing out he wanted to kill them all and he was he was adamant about getting one of those guys on there he was gonna fight oh him. yeah we it was like slap off. shot he wanted to take every so that was the game hitch i got these two front teeth knocked out yeah no i got the i got the stick yes is that why That's, he did it was that? the cops it was the oh cops God. and firefighters and somebody lifted my stick i'm a terrible hockey player yes, skater you, are. you name you are. it terrible you are and somebody lifted my stick smashed me right in the teeth and they they snapped in half i'm like i was like just breathing in the, the nerve endings were out and was that was the crazy. game honestly that, that was, the, was game. the game oh my god i that well it's funny i just thought of that today and i didn't think that was your teeth knockout but but he was going to fight everyone and everyone. we almost had that we almost had to shut the game off like just to cancel it because, because it wasn't for the two thousand people that lost five dollars to get in we kept going and played, oh but it was, God. we had to tell Deke, like, dude, you're going to like, these refs are just volunteers. <laughs> they can't stop you. You're going to beat the crap out of these guys. Oh my he was God. Great, you want to kill everybody. Remember the hump? Oh he yeah. The, he had that big hump. I'm starting to get that. eh? Are you? Yeah. Oh yeah. boy. Oh, I can't to wait to little... make fun of you. I can't wait yeah. to make fun of the hump on your back. And Deeker had, had... We always talk, we talk about O'Shea, his name comes up a lot, but you got to understand, we've known O'Shea our whole life. He's played on both sides. We've played with him, played against him. But when he was playing in Hamilton, he lived with Deke. Do you remember when him and Deeker lived together? And Deke's living room was basically the turf. He took the turf from Iverwind Stadium and put it in his living room. All the chewing what tobacco chewing. and spit. Oh, yeah. Seagull shit. Hey, seagull shit. Deaker. Oh, Deke, I love oh, The best. There was, we, had, uh, we had some beauties. How about the merman? You remember uh, Murray? <laughs> Urban Bowman. Oh, the, the, the steamless cup of coffee. Yeah, there was all full scotch in at 7 o'clock in the scotch. morning. What, hey, That's Coach, how you got hey. off a of special team. Oh, yeah. Bring him a bottle of scotch. You're not on any special teams. Nope. Perfect. Oh, my I gosh. love it. You know, just we uh, had some beauties. You know, I saw at the, uh, the Argo game when I was there a couple weeks ago, um, Weber. Webb, the uh, oh, Danny, Danny, Danny Webb, Webb. yeah, oh, he's yeah. been there what, 40 years. How long has he been there? At least he's got to be the most tenured guy because uh, Mandruziak, Dwayne, yeah. used to be, yeah, and him, him and Jetta were, were kind of one and one. So, so uh, Danny's got to be. I, I saw him on TV when I was watching the, the he uh, hasn't, he Toronto hasn't, aged, game. he hasn't aged much. I'm telling you, me, I walk, he's like, he's like, hey, and I'm like, oh my god, remember me, like, I'm. Oh, he's for the many, best. many years. Just came up, shook my hand, quick a hug, and, and I asked him what Bugsy's doing. Because Bugsy was <laughs> Bugsy was our trainer, and those two were in cahoots. They were selling, they were probably selling all of our equipment for making some cash. Who knows what oh, those two are doing? Yeah. But I asked what Bugsy's doing. I said, I don't have his number. What's he doing? Like, he's still in Guelph. Um, I thought he was working for Guelph University, but he's working at a golf course. He texted me and Web, Web, Weber gave me his, uh, his number. So yeah. we were having a conversation and he's I working at Bugsy. a golf course. Oh my God. Do you, oh, do you, do you remember <laughs> Winnipeg? <laughs> Ginsu. 
oh, the Ginsu. The, you know, the, the Ginsu is another one. But do you remember Winnipeg? We were there for that that hockey tournament. Remember the CFL hockey tournament? And we were up in our room. <laughs> Portage Prairie. And, yes. But before we went to Portage, the one night, the first night on the second year, we had like a gala dinner in Winnipeg. And we were staying at this one hotel. I can't remember the name of it. But outside of our room, one of our rooms, was like a common area. And there was ladies doing yoga out there or doing stretching calisthenics. And we had Bugsy in the room and we stripped Bugsy down and threw him out the door and closed the door on him. And then he's out there. Then he started doing calisthenics with the girls. Then the cops came and then they came into the room and they wanted to know. (laughs) Obviously, Bugsy's not hard to to find because he's he's this big. He's got two big teeth. He pops out. 4'11", maybe 140. Got a tripod though. That's, that's what oh, I hear. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 He's Anyways. doing okay. Bugsy's doing okay. But he, he got a little bit of trouble. The police came. He said his name was Bugsy. They said, what's yeah. your last name? He said Malone. Bugsy Malone. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, nobody they got figured hurt. out who they figured out who he was uh, with. And they, they rather, anyone get, rather quick. Get her now, now he's in jail. Oh boy. Jail. Yeah. But we have to yeah. like say the the ladies that were doing that were all in their like seventies, right? Sixties. Oh 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bugsy. God. Yeah, we can't mention the Ginsu. The Ginsu's. Uh, that's no, a little it's bit understood. offside. It's a little bit offside. If he's listening to this, he'll understand the Ginsu. <laughs> and a few other guys that were there would know the Ginsu as well. Oh my gosh. What else is going on? Ah, buddy, it's uh, busy. You know. Like I said, I'm out here doing a little trap. The weather is terrible. Okay? Yeah. This weather's got to go. I think it's eight. I can't handle it. It has. It's not stopped raining in 48 hours here. It's cold. It's awful. eight, nine degrees. It's awful. Can't even take my dog for a walk. No. Who's the cat's got next? Do we know? That's a good question. <laughs> hey, David, our hey, producer. David, David come Who's on here for a second. Next? Who does the cat's got next? Oh, he... He won't yeah. even come on, but he no. did text us. Yeah. Edmonton, the, the Elks. Elks, the Elks. So they're two and two and seven. They got two games in hand, so they can go up to four. They're right behind the Cats if they win the next two. Um, I don't think that up. Hey, they no. just traded today, the way they got Nick Arbuckle is oh, now going from Toronto to the Elks. And Harris went where? Not uh, Harris. Harris went from the Elks to oh, Montreal. No. David, David, <laughs> oh, he's on Google right now. He's on he's Google. He's helping us on Google. Yeah. You well, know, we should know this stuff, but. Well, we can't know everything. No, there's too much going on. There's so much going there's on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. You know, one other thing that uh, I don't think a lot of people knew about what football players, not just football, like, I think for us, especially being hometown kids, Growing up watching the Cats, uh, Danny. When Danny Mac came in 90, 1998, he had a pretty good relationship with uh, with Mac Hospital, and oh, yeah. he uh, he got set up. I uh, forget who the lady was. She was a sweetheart, and she was we used awesome. To, we used to go there. I think once a month, at least, maybe once every month and a half. Well, he was so. there all the time. He was there yeah. all the time. We would. Was it Marlene? What was her Marlene, name? Uh, Marlene. Mark. 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 And she was, she was like awesome. salt of the earth sweetheart, and yeah. we used to go in with like footballs and like stuffed tie cats little little tcs and stuff and uh very very sad when you're going in there especially when you have some young kids when you're you know at that age when we were going in there we had some young kids and uh just to see the, the faces of these kids with cancer and, and and different types of illnesses and going through and just making their day and when we left i'll always remember um marg or other people yeah, that sent emails yeah. back to the back to the the tie cats and just said that you would not believe the their faces when we left like the joy and just giving them that thing for that day and it, and it, it to this day i remember doing that and it's you know it'd still be nice to go but nobody kids would know who we are now it'd be too bad it for us to know, go but you know what Here, it was so nice every time, so every time we did that we went there with the intention of making them feel better and yeah. every time we left feeling better, they made us feel better. Yeah. yeah. About they our were lives. So excited to see it. Yeah. So excited yeah. to see us. So excited that we were there and we were like, oh my God, you know, it, uh, those are, but kudos to Danny. Danny yeah. was, Danny, he, he rode that ship, one yeah. thing about Danny that a lot of people don't know. If you just look at Danny as a football player, you miss the, the, every other great aspect about Danny. Yeah. Like he did so much stuff 
behind the scenes that he didn't say boo to anybody. He did it because he wanted to do it. He did it because it was important. That that guy is, and that's why to me he was the he was the best all round kind of yeah. football player, quarterback. Yeah. He was just leader. It was awesome. Yeah. It and, was and, awesome. Pe- and people like this day and age, and I'm not saying the players this day and age in the last five, six, ten years or whatever it is. I mean, you get we used to get paid to go do some appearances, never got paid to do that. Never wanted to get paid to do anything like that. And nor would I ever take anything to, to, or you and I, or any team member would, would go to the hospital and take anything from that. But we, uh, yeah, just, oh, man, just the, the, the joy. And, and it brought so much joy to everybody doing that. And, and, uh, wish up the, I hope the guys are still doing that. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's yeah, it's still harder with COVID. Out. It's harder with COVID because then you can't yeah. really go in, you can't do the visits, but that's something to, Hey, it, Let's just say right now, you and I would do that in a heartbeat if somebody wants us to do it, right? Again, if any, anyone's absolutely. listening from Mac and you want us to come, we'll yeah. be there. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think any, one of the six six listeners is going to have us. <laughs> Maybe could, someone can reach out if they're listening. Um, hey, you know where I went the other day? I was on Concession Street for two reasons. Well, one, I was dropping off my daughter and I had some time to kill a volleyball because you can't even you can't go and watch kids play anymore, no. right? You can't get into we can't do anything. So I had a couple hours to kill. So I remember reading about this awesome place to get roti. And I love curry, chicken, roti. So there's a place, I think it's called the Great Canadian Roti Shop, whatever it is on concession. It's awesome. But I started going for a walk around there. I went to Grigger's, uh, Tim Hortons. I wanted to see see what's going on. Oh, he's not there. Are you kidding me? He's not there. See, why would he be there? He's he's got it. He's doing his thing, man. He's got it made in the shade. He's worked his time. Now he's got the staff doing. But I think he's at this Brantford location a lot because yeah. he's got that store there. Yeah, but uh, he's done well. He and has he's done well, and we have to have him on the show because oh, we have. To. I think maybe next week. I think we should yeah. reach out. To, let's, let's reach out to him and see what Gregor wants to do. See if he wants to come out. He would let's love it. Do it. Absolutely. Talk. He can uh, get a Tim Hort- Tim Horton sponsor for us. Bring us Ooh. coffees. Yeah, don't tell Andrew's about, always been good at that. Don't tell him about the Monopoly and uh, McDonald's. What so. happened? Oh no! Oh, you, you. I like me. I like McDonald's coffee. Oh, but when Gregor comes on, you can't talk about that. It's Tim Hortons when he comes on. The so, chicken you know sandwich. What's funny? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, the chicken sandwich is so good. Yeah. So I've started this thing now where I, you know, everybody likes to fast or whatever, or don't eat for so many hours. So I thought I, you know, every like two months I try something different. So usually every morning I would get up, have a coffee, glass of water. And then on the way to work, I grab a chicken McMuffin, no mayo, no butter, mint. But lately I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to push it now. I'm not going to eat till like noon. see if it works. It's no problem, buddy. I get up, have a coffee, water, maybe another coffee later. I don't have a chicken McMuffin no more. And they don't serve them after 11 o'clock. So, you so can't I'm, I'm get screwed the now, urge. pooched. I can't yeah. even get it. But you of all people mm-hmm. should know you're an athlete. We're an athlete. You should know we're, that, we're, we're, that breakfast is the most important in the morning. You have to have something in Who your told system. You, that? you think uh, that? I do. I think it starts your day. Get the energy level going. You don't have to eat lunch. Just eat a nice breakfast. Oh, yeah. see, that's what I do. Now I'm only eating lunch and maybe a little dinner. Yeah, I don't know. I don't well, know. I think I like breakfast though. Yeah, me too. About five five years ago, pre pre shoulder surgery, I went uh, and saw this this lady in Burlington. Um, she was like a natural path. Blah, blah, oh, blah. I saw her too. I saw. Is this the same lady? Was it near uh, like Walker's or Appleby on Fairview area and like a uh, second just level off, of a building? No, no, no. Uh, this one's at a house. I, this one was at a house. She was. I don't know, 24, 25 years old, um, lived at her parents' place and you show up, knock on the door and she's got a whole section just for her. Like she's so this, this lady, she, uh, she takes a picture of your retina, right? She like, yeah, put your, your face in this thing and they open your eye up and they take a picture of your retina. And she told me like four things that were wrong with me. You have, you have a left shoulder problem. I'm like, yep. She goes, you've had head injuries. Yep. She kept going. And I'm like, how do you know this? She said, because I could read it from your, from your retina. What? And it was, it's 75 bucks. The best 75 bucks you'll ever spend. Me too. You got to go see her. I'm pretty sure she's still doing it. 
Um, and she put me on this candida cleanse. And if you look up candida cleanse, it's not a diet. It's none of that crap. It's uh, this was like uh, only alcohol, like no alcohol, no wine, no beer, yeah. uh, only alcohol. And you like this is clear tequila, gin, or vodka. That's it. If you're going to do it and in moderation, not every single day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, salads, no salad dressings, no mayonnaise, none of that stuff. It's uh, oil and like some natural stuff you can put in. Um, I didn't have any meat. Uh, what else? No, no white pasta. Uh, just you no name breads, it. Like, no nothing. No breads, nothing. Like you're thinking, okay, now it's a diet, but honestly I did it for, I think I did it for three months and it was written in the middle of hockey season. So I wasn't drinking beer, which sucked, but I brought a little thing of vodka with me to the, to the, to the change. Room. I drank, drank five vodkas instead of five beers. And um, I'll tell you, I, I never felt so much. I was on a probiotic. I was on like, really, you name it. And I've, I've never felt better. And, and of course it's a lifestyle change, right? You don't just That's do that. Problem. You don't it's do it and then change. stop. Yeah. You don't stop. I stopped after like think four or five months and then kind of was summertime coming and I went back into the normal, you know, I shouldn't say I'm not fat, but I think that you can start seeing 51 in two days. My birthday's in two days. Oh, for real. Yeah. So by the time people are listening to this, it'll be your birthday tomorrow. I got wine. Cheers. Hey, good for you. I did that thing too. I did that whole yeah. natural path. She, she did made me do something else, like hold on to some things. It was yeah. like I was in science, Scientology. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. know what was happening. Holding yeah. on to some stuff that tested whatever the conductivity. And she's like, you're basically allergic to everything. You can't have booze. You can't have this. You can't have celery. You can't have onions. You can't have pasta. I'm like, what? I can have tuna and a Tic Tac. That's about all I can have. Yeah. But within about a week, I, all that crap weight yep. falls right off. You know how much it crap does. weight we oh, have from buddy. eating crap and garbage? No. Unbelievable. We used, to, we used to take the Citro Meg, drink a sip of oh, that to clear yeah. yourself out. Probably not the greatest oh, stuff. To, probably not the greatest is, stuff to take. I got another O'Shea story for oh, that. So, okay. <laughs> so O'Shea, when O'Shea, was, oh, where was he playing? I, wherever the hell he was. So he was living in Burlington with Val St. Germain. So we used to roll over to, to Val and Osha's house before we hit up Tequila Willie's or we went to the border, whatever filthies, it was. We, filthies. Wherever. And we'd, we'd pre-drink there and have some fun. So this one day, Osh, you know, mixes a drink for me, a vodka citro bag, which tastes and looks like 7-Up. Fellas, people, ladies, it's not 7-Up. <laughs> It's, not good. it's the stuff you drink before you go in for like, you know, surgery or yeah, colonoscopy. <laughs> so here I am. I pound the, uh, the whatever. Hey, we got to go. got to go pound a boom. I, I pound a vodka and citron mag, which I thought was fun. Was how, many, how, how many? An hour? And you're dead? <laughs> the whole bottle. The whole no, bottle. But how long did it take? An hour? An hour later. I'm in the club. Boom. We're at Tequila Willie's downstairs. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm <laughs> And Osha just looking at me, smiling. I said, "Oh no, oh yeah." I'm like, oh, and there's no turning off the tap. But no, you're there all night. There's no, all night. no. I had to run upstairs. And first of all, who wants to go do anything? Sit down on any toilet in a in a bar, oh. in all a over bar. the seats, piss on oh. the seats. <laughs> I sat in that toilet in that bathroom on that shitter for hours. Yeah. When I thought I was done, every time I got up. Oh, and any time you even thought about farting no. was like the end of the no. world. <laughs> I had, I could throw up my underwear, I, everything. I was like, this, you asshole, while they're downstairs dancing, partying, having oh. drinks, I spent three or four hours on the shitter in the bar. Yeah. Awful. Oh, and what he, a prick. We got to get him back. We're going to do that. <laughs> give it to him, give it to him before a game. Hey, we'll go visit him, give it to him before a game, and then watch him on the oh, sideline yeah. squirm. Oh, yeah. He I love would know it. The better, other right? thing he did to me, we were oh, he's done lots of things. But we were, for some stupid reason, when we both uh, were involved in Filthy McNasties, we decided to rent the Winnebago and take the Winnebago to the Filthies in Kitchener because we had a Filthies in Kitchener, Waterloo. So we had a bunch of the boys there. We rode in. Uh, I think it was a bunch of Toronto guys at that point. We're having a good time. At the end of the night, you know, we're, we're starving. So 
I'm like, I'll run to the kitchen, grab some whatever nachos and salsa, this and that. I forgot something, ran back. And then I come back and, you know, there's a, grabbed a chip and salsa, which by the way, I didn't realize until after I ate it, that he had taken the chip and just ran it right up the old culo and placed it right beside <laughs> the salsa. So he knew I would eat it. So here I am after the fact that he tells me what he does. What an ass. So we start, you know, here in my head, I'm planning. Because when you when you get him back, you got to understand he's going to get you back 10 times more. So it's yeah. like a battle, right? You yeah. have to pick your spots. Yeah. So later on the night, you know, it's just near the end of the night already. He's talking about choking some guy out. Because Osha's a master. Yeah. He can choke you out like this or Spock. like this or whatever. Spock. Oh, he'll take you down no time. He's like, I feel like choking somebody out. I'm like, Baba, but next thing you know, he's got me arm up like this. He's choking me out in the bar. I go down to the ground. I felt like I was out for half an hour, maybe out for 10 seconds. I get up. I'm a disaster. Everybody's laughing at me. So I'm like, I can't, now I'm planning my attack. So after the bar, we leave and go to some late night diner. And, you know, he's sitting across from me and we're eating whatever the hell we're eating, poutine, whatever it is at that night. And I, underneath the table, I, I, open up the pepper and I dump it into my hand and he's sitting across me and I'm like, Oh, she's like, yeah. I go, and I blow it in his face. So it hits him in the eyes and, oh, and he can't see and he's staggering around and he's a disaster. And he's, we're all laughing. He walks to the bathroom and he's in the bathroom. He's not coming out for a while and he's got the sink and he's filling the sink with water and he's trying to clean uh. out his eyes. And when he opens his eyes, the sink was full of puke. He was cleaning his, his face with a whole bowl of puke. And he didn't know. But I didn't know that was going to happen. Oh. But it worked to perfection. It worked perfectly. Oh, my perfectly. God. That is good. The problem with, with, with Osh is you couldn't even get him back now. He would know something's no. up. Like, yeah. he's very smart that way. He, he's, oh, yeah. he, he thinks he's like in a chess game. He's thinking... Yeah, two or three moves ahead. ahead of you. Yeah, miles yeah. ahead. He's already thinking these guys yeah, are going to no, try to get think. me. There's no reason why Mitzi and uh, and Hitch are coming to visit me in Winnipeg to watch a game. There's, they're going to do no, something. There's a there's a something. So there's a reason behind the scenes. Yeah. So you know what I do now? Because I he's too far away to get him. Whenever I see his bust up at level four or five, there I give that thing just a yeah. grinder. I, I take a picture and I say, yeah. "There you go, buddy. Yeah, there Perfect. you go. What a beauty." Oh my oh, god, the good old days, my friend. Hey, that's yeah. that's what we got. Listen, was it 440? Yeah, oh, that's, that's good. we're on the we're good. Yeah, that's, that's it. I think that's we had enough. a good chat today. That was fun today. That was fun. I know. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Tomorrow. By the time this airs, it'll be Wednesday, Hitch's birthday, Thursday. If you're listening, send him a note. Say happy birthday. He's 51. Look at him. He's beautiful. He's gorgeous. Look at this guy. Amazing. <laughs> That's it for today. You're the best, buddy. Love you. Thanks, buddy. Love you too, fella. That's it for the Morielli and Hitch show on the Ticats Audio Network. Morielli and Hitch, dropping every Wednesday. Subscribe, like, laugh.